Hey what's up guys, welcome to Deuterium Tech. In this video, we're going to unbox one of the best value for your money motherboards that you can buy for a Ryzen 5000 series CPU. And this is the ROG Strix X570E Gaming from ASUS. Now you might notice that there's another uh, there's another motherboard called the ROG Strix X570F and that's a bit different. Lower specs, we'll talk about that later. But for now, let's unbox this motherboard. So, um, the store that I bought this from, well, I had this delivered by a courier, so they have to put this. I'm not sure if this is standard for motherboards uh, from Asus, but yeah, there's a seal. Okay, leave that open. Apparently there's still a tongue there. And Booyah, that's so pretty. What you have inside the box is the motherboard itself. This is an ATX size motherboard. It's a bit heavy. We'll take a look at that later. There's the motherboard inside a static resistant packaging. It's too big, it won't fit in the viewport. But the, there. doesn't have a back plate and I think that's it bad have to be careful there you go so the ROG Strix X570E motherboard features a built-in IO shield which is very good so you don't accidentally forget to put the IO shield during your build heat sinks for the VRM, here's the CPU socket for our two dual channel RAM slots. That's four slots, channel one, channel two. And yeah, that's pretty standard for AM4 for, um, motherboards. You have a fan for the chipset, two slots for NVMe storage, two PCIe Gen 4 slots, that's the time 16, and two times one actually it's nice it's semi-transparent and you have a Q code displays a code if your motherboard is having troubles starting up why is the capacitor oh yeah I hope this isn't a problem the capacitor is a bit tilted this is the circuit pre for the audio and it has uh, two 12 volt RGB connectors, two 5 volt RGB connectors. I think this is the USB 3.0. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to put a diagram and point what the parts are. All right. Now that we've done, with, we're done with that. Oh, let's take a look at the back side. By the way, this one has LED, LED, and there's lighting here as well. The back side. So you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven USB ports, 2.5G LAN port, one, uh, the Intel LAN port, I forgot what exactly it is, it's Intel 12 something something, Wi Fi, built in Wi Fi, now that's one thing that's not in the F model. Here's your um, audio connectors, display port, and HDMI. And it overall, the look and feel of this motherboard is really. It's a bit heavier. It's the heaviest motherboard that I have held. And one reason for that is because it has a heatsink for the VRM. Now this is uh, all connected. I'm not sure where it vents the heat. There's no more fan in here. And it's definitely not going directly to the fans here. So this is just to spread out the heat evenly. The heat pipe is there to spread the heat through the heatsink so that it dissipates the heat much more efficiently. Now, other than that, you have six SATA connectors. No, not six, that's eight SATA connectors. Wait, I'm not sure what this is. I... 
Um, how many fans? One, two, three, four. Four fan connect. Five, six, seven fan connectors. Maybe there's another one that's hiding somewhere. Well, at least for now, I counted up to seven. Now let's look at the other things that's inside the box. Oh, here's one. So this is this was placed on top of the motherboard. Not exactly sure what this is. Probably the connectors that you need to, for your build. Oh, opens through that. All right. That's your Wi-Fi antenna. Just a Wi-Fi antenna? It's nothing else. Just a Wi-Fi antenna. Really neat triangle. You know what? Let's open it up. Since this is a boxing anyway, this is the stand. That's the stand for the antenna. You put it like... Nope. Like that. Probably not the best way to unpack it. But yeah, already done. Okay, have to remove this as well. Okay, so it goes through there. Actually, I did not look at the manual how to do it. I'm just guessing here, but I think that's how it should work. If it's not, uh, then we'll just check the manual. I don't think this is, I don't think this is the right way. I think this is the right way. There, and then the wire goes there. There's a slot there where you can put the wire. And that's one of the things that's good about this motherboard is that it has a Wi-Fi 802.11ax, one of the latest standards for um, Wi-Fi. Not gonna explain it right now. I didn't have it, uh, had enough research to actually say enough about it. And you have your uh, SATA connectors. And on this side, I have no idea what this is. Motherboard screws. It's supposed to be something. Oh, look. A, huh, something you put on your door when you're playing. Interesting. It would be nice if it, it's just cardboard. It doesn't even have stickers, it's just cardboard. It would be nice if it was actually laminated. No stickers? I'm disappointed, Asus. I don't have stickers in this package. Maybe it's just here. Installation CD. Okay, more of this. More of this uh, discount coupon. You know, I don't have really any plans to buy anything from Cable Mod. I already have another coupon which I, I'm not sure if I'm gonna use. So feel free to use this code. What is this? Um, thank you card. That's a nice uh, quality. Would be nice for a bookmark. That's all. That's all in the box, ladies and gentlemen. So now let's talk about what's the difference between the E model and the F model. Oh wait, I just found the stickers. There is actually a set of stickers. It's this one. Looks, it's, it looks really nice. It's um, it has that sort of matte, shiny but matte look. And that's all. Now, the E variant is obviously more packed with features. It has dual LAN ports, a 2.5 gigabit Realtek port, and a 1 gigabit Intel port. The F variant only has 1 gigabit Intel LAN port. The E variant has a built-in Wi-Fi that's a 802.11ax Wi-Fi module. It's an AX200 module, aka Wi-Fi 6. The F variant does not have Wi-Fi. 
The E variant has a Q code LED and debug LEDs. The F variant only has debug LEDs. And lastly, the E variant has 16 power stages while the F variant only has 14. While 14 is okay for most use cases and some overclocking, it would be best for you to get 16 power stages if you plan on doing some extreme overclocking. The pricing of the Asus Strix X570e motherboard varies greatly depending on the region. You can get one for $389 in Newegg, but the one that I bought, I only got it for less than $300, around $275, and that's already after tax. The difference between the two motherboards, the X570e and X570f, also varies greatly depending on the region. In some cases, the difference can reach up to $100. That's from people. That, that report comes from people who live in Australia. But in the US, I believe the difference are only around, is only around like less than $50. So if the price difference in your country is just really small, you might as well just get the E variant because that's more powerful, has more features as well. But if the difference is too great for you, just go with whatever your budget allows you to. And that's all for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Hit like if you like this video. Dislike if you dislike it. Let me know in the comments what you think and if you have any questions. And of course, don't forget to subscribe.